This is a video that will show you how to cut and connect electroluminescent sheets. Electroluminescent sheets are sometimes also known as backlight sheets, EL panels, EL foils and flat light panels. This tutorial is done by electogo.com.au You can contact us on info at electogo.com.au Here's a few examples of some colours we have available. Hello and welcome to Electigo. We're going to have a look at EL panels. There's a couple of different ones on the market. Some of them you can't cut, but this particular one you can. Um, as you can see, it's really nice and floppy. So you can actually curve it up. You can get a curve quite safely like this, and then it'll be fine, it will still work. So a great one for lettering signs. You can wrap it around objects, etc. Um, this one's made with a pink powder. It actually glows white with a very faint hint of pink. This is a slightly different colour. On the back you'll see multiple electrode lines. This is how it's powered up. But I won't go into the technicalities too much right now because we have got uh, full print instructions available. I'll just put that to one side. Um, it's also very light, which makes it really great for putting in frames. You can just uh, stick it to a board if you want, once you've got your piece ready. Okay, so I'll show you how easy it is to cut. I'll just see what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. There's a piece. Very easy to cut. However, I would advise that you um, prefer, you know, you'd be much better off using a scalpel or something sharp like that. It would give you a much cleaner cut and is less likely to cause any splitting as we've got there. Right, one important rule when cutting is to not do it the way I just did because my piece has only got one little line to connect to it's absolutely no good you need two lines so anywhere along here you can connect up the power source so here is a, a black lock connector this is similar to the one um, you would use for EL wires it's a split AC current that enters in through this wire from the inverter so it gets split as it comes out here so you have to make sure you split it as it goes on the panel so you'd put one wire to there and one wire to there. It doesn't matter where on this bus bar we call it, it doesn't matter where you actually put it, just as long as there's one on each and that the current doesn't jump across that white strip. There's no problem if you wanted to put one here, for example, and another one here, as long as you can see they're in a separate area, they're on a separate strip. Okay, so now you know we have to include one of these pieces in our cut, one of these bus bars. Here's a piece I did earlier. I'll just shape that back. So I've cut that out of here and I've allowed myself a piece of bus bar to power it to. The best way to connect it is actually to use a glue, is what we've found, electroconductive glue. So here's a panel I did and we used the glue. It works quite well but you do need to be patient. It takes some time for that glue to cure. I'll compare that to a connection done with soldering and it works the same but had a bit of an accident at the beginning because I find it's very difficult to control the solder without overheating and burning the panel. So the electroconductive glue is probably the best way to go. For the purpose of today's test I've just literally stuck it down with a piece of tape. I'll just let you zoom in in a minute and you'll see that I've made sure that none of those fibers are hanging off that bar. None of them are sort of reaching over to the other side. If they did, it would short circuit. So you see one's just on this bar, one is on this bar. This little tab here of electrical um, sealing tape is only so that I can hold it because once the power enters this panel, this whole area is actually live. Now when I say live, you're not talking about a sort of household power or something that's going to be um, deadly. It's a very high frequency AC current of around 110 to 140. It's not going to kill you, but I would advise that anyone with um, electrical equipment such as pacemakers stay well away from this. Anyone else, just make sure you have something to protect your hands from getting the current. If you do accidentally get a shock, it will be a sort of light sort of zing um, it won't be too awful but it will make you jump so to please please always be follow precautions um, and the best bet is to get someone who's an expert in electronics to give you a hand with this
So I'm testing this piece with an inverter. Before I can find out what inverter will work, I need to know the surface area. So I'll have a look at this one. We've got 10 there, 7 there, so approximately 70 centimeters squared. There's a bit of a chunk there, so maybe it's about 60, maybe just under. This inverter happens to do 600 to 800 centimeters of EL wire. Take that decimal point back one, and it does 60 to 80 centimeters of EL panel or EL tape. So it should be right for this piece. So I just check it's off, it's off. Connect that up. Hold it here and turn it on. I can hear a, a screaming sound, a wide, uh, a high pitched whine. You can just about see that glow there. So I'm just going to turn off the lights and you'll see it in the dark. Okay, this is on continuous light. This is on flash. Once again, precautions. Don't touch it unless you're touching something that insulates you from the current. If you were to put a damp finger along the edge of this, you'd get a bit of a tingle. Now there's full instructions on the website explaining how to cut these, how to deal with them and also how to insulate them afterwards and all the safety precautions so um, please please click onto the website and click on the tutorial if you can't find it just drop us an email you can email info at elect2go.com.au thank you